People are really digging this goddamn movie. And I know I'm probably never going to see it. and definitely not going to be going to the theaters or buying it at a pre on a premium service or anything like that. But I am glad that other people are enjoying a good product. At least from what I can see is a good product. And I know Rotten Tomatoes isn't exactly the best measurement when it comes to how well people are enjoying it. But when it's as overwhelming as this, like 97% even from the fucking critics and it's 382 Two reviews you know they're doing something right and then 99 audience score with over 25,000 verified ratings they are clearly winning okay and week over week and now if it was just oh it's a sequel of a movie that a lot of people have a lot of fond memories of and you know what i have the original top gun that's over on my media shelf somewhere i've never seen it or anything like that and you know what hey whenever somebody would bring up top gun i just always thought that it was the, uh, the homosexual fighter pilot movie right so I guess maybe it makes sense that it came out in June. But anyways, no, it had that uh, goofy fucking uh, volleyball scene with half-naked guys and you had Goose and Iceman and Maverick and Goose Fucker. You had all of those guys that were there and it was just kind of a big bro military gung-ho just a quintessential 80s film and that's fucking great okay how well would that translate into the 21st century okay in the year of 2022 you know current year after all overwhelmingly successful that's great and if it would have just been one week off it would have been yeah okay it's a sequel of a nostalgic movie that's fine but going into the second week the fact that it hasn't really tapered off that much that's fantastic so that means that word of mouth is out there that you know what hey this is a good film okay and the fact that it continues to succeed means that there's got to be a gimmick behind it and the fact that it's not woke it's pro-american uh it just is a return to practical effects like there's actual fighter pilots and actual fighter planes in the sky as opposed to some cg conglomerated fucking disaster of a flick looking at you dr strange with real fucking movie stars in it people are going to see that word of mouth is out there and it continues to win top gun maverick has been breaking records left and right ever since it opened on may 27th it's becoming the best opening weekend preview oh in the history of paramount as well oh as people couldn't wait to see the return of top or tom cruise flying into the skies again but this isn't like a one-off for tom cruise okay like i haven't i don't think i've watched a tom cruise film since collateral which i think was great and he probably should have won something for that but regardless like what was it, it post mission impossible 3 so like four and i think four and five are out like people really enjoy those as well like this dude's just out here winning the the little guy he's one of the last few remaining movie stars that are out there and it's not just the nostalgia fumes here okay he just continues to plow forward with great performance after great performance or so i've heard okay all i'm seeing is reviews and listening to the opinions of trusted sources like i said i haven't seen anything like this okay i'm not that interested when it comes to movies but i'm interested in the fact that you know what hey it really looks like this is starting to crack through on a mainstream level because yeah we've been silently people on this side of the aisle have been silently cheering on we're kind of tired of this woke garbage that's in the mainstream media right now and uh the fact that there's something that came along that's this fucking high profile and it's just beating the brakes off of the rest of the competition. I hope, I hope that this is where the course starts to be corrected. Because there's no, like, a lot of people like to use the analogy of, oh, the pendulum's eventually got to swing back the other way. There's no pendulum, okay? We're on a fucking one-way track, okay? We were on a little bit of a deviation. Hopefully, this is a little bit of that course correction where you can get back on fucking track, okay? Tangent aside. Now, we know that Top Gun Maverick has been the biggest box office hit of Tom Cruise's, which is another box office record, has been broken for Mission Impossible actor. Okay. Now, Top Gun Maverick's box office numbers reveal another Tom Cruise record has been broken and hasn't been talked about until now. Tom Cruise has, oh, has had the best opening weekend ever as Top Gun Maverick made $124 million over the course of a weekend. This weekend. This past weekend. Okay. That's tremendous. Okay. You, any studio would love an opening weekend to be nine fucking digits, but they did it on what? Their third weekend out there? That's amazing. That's, that's tremendous. That is amazing. The biggest opener for a Memorial Day weekend flick 
uh, at 156 million. That was over Memorial Day weekend. It just literally keeps winning because you take a look at what what are the other competitors that are out there. Okay, I think earlier this year, what Batman came out. What did that do? Yeah, that did uh, what nine digits as well, and then it completely fucking. Poof fell right off a cliff okay the past marvel films that are out there shang chi black widow uh the eternals they all did what just about just about if not more than nine digits and then immediately right after that like a 50 to 75 percent drop off week two because word started to spread around that it's oh okay cool it's just a bait and switch okay great it's just gonna be oh the girl who has the key to everything great wonderful fantastic oh you don't actually get a payoff it's just another instance of key jangling and just ooh, get excited for next product now this is a film that people have been looking forward to for a very 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 long time because one of the first one come out mid 80s i wasn't even fucking born yet okay and now we're finally getting a sequel to this and if it didn't pay off there would have been that huge drop off but there wasn't but there wasn't so that means that there's goodwill out there and i've heard nothing but glowing praise and reviews when it comes to this film and that's fantastic and that's when the dogs start to come out because no 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 okay there's one side of the aisle that has exclusive rights that's what they think over the entertainment industry and they're not going to go down without a fight okay because you got salon.com here and let's just go ahead and size this appropriately so we can get all of this fucking autism on the screen for you according to salon uh melanie mcfarland no top gun isn't an anti-woke success story but rather a tribute to aging tom cruise and balls what did you forget to write the rest of your headline like uh, the uh, an aging tom cruise and balls what <laughs> all right You've piqued my interest. Not with balls or anything, that's weird. Why are conservatives so desperate to claim this as their movie? It's basically a two-hour, 11-minute Cialis ad. Oh, great. Once again, instead of having a cohesive and cogent argument, you just devolve into a uh, shaming language. How appropriate. How wonderful. We know that we're going to be in for something special here. Explaining the success of Top Gun Maverick isn't tough. All that's required is having some inkling of what uh, we the people enjoy. We adore watching Tom Cruise and action flicks. Well, if it's just adoring Tom Cruise, he doesn't put out enough content to really burn anybody out on something. And he's successful across a multitude of franchises. So maybe if more people would do that, um, you'd have a pattern here to point to. Or the fact that they got most of the key players back for like a, the 40 year reunion. Maybe that's something. But uh, no, it's it, it's just simply an action flick. Okay, it's an action flick. It's a, it's a harken back to a bygone era, right? Whatever. For one thing, proven by his long track record of bankability. Okay. So you start out by giving tepid praise. All right. Fast vehicles are high on our list of likes, too. Put Tom Cruise and Navy Captain Pete Maverick Mitchells inside a fighter jet. Show him exercising his need for speed through challenging terrain. And guess what? People will plunk down money to see it on the largest screen as possible. All right. Where's the biting criticism that the headline led us to believe that we'd find here? But do you know what Americans really love? Balls. No. Americans really love tits. So I don't really know where you're going with this. Maybe you like balls across your chin, on the bridge of your nose, and your mouth. Like, I, I don't know what you're talking about here. That affair transcends political affiliation and tribalism. Well, but what you mean is um, masculine frame and reliability uh, for one side that uh, appreciates your term balls. And then on the other side, you guys are so concerned about slapping a pair on a female and then removing, the, and removing them from men. I think we have something to agree on, but I don't think that's what you're going for here. The angry red balls in need of scientifically proven medication tend to get the most attention, but let's not count out our frustrated blue balls and their trickier, harder to pin down purple ones. What are you talking about here? This is just ridiculous. I'm just skipping ahead a little bit because this is just ridiculous. Top Gun Maverick was made for a crowd, even as it bridges ge er, generational gaps by emphasizing spectacle over any message. Yeah, exactly. That's another reason why people are liking this film because it's not trying to push a fucking narrative it's about fighter jets okay 
people dogfighting in the sky, okay? A, a recognizable face or two on the screen. And the fact that it's not an overbloated runtime of three and a half fucking hours, it's two hours, 11 minutes, you're in, you're out, and you're on with the rest of your day. It's like, that was a sweet way to see a bunch of spectacle on the screen. Great, terrific, okay? It's not trying to push any message that, oh, the United States really has a, has a troubled history when it comes to fighter jets. You know, you remember the Tuskegee Air... And it's like, we don't need to be hearing about this shit, okay? You just want to fucking unplug for two hours. You want to sit down and then you want to get on with the rest of your day, okay? You can tackle the rest... Uh, the ills of society however you want to after after that okay you just need a fucking pit stop for a minute i understand okay clearly the author of this nonsense doesn't and certainly none deeper than look at tom cruise still keeping it tight i don't think people were really looking at that it's like yeah he's almost six he is or almost 60 congratulations terrific and it's not that hard to get that much muscle mass or to really look filled out when you're five foot one for emotional flavor it tosses in some father-son healing between maverick's father figure and the surrogate child lieutenant bradley rooster bradshaw miles teller and the son of the dead friend goose by way of behind enemy lines fly by oh no spoilers uh by the main hooks uh are the roaring fight or er, yeah flight sequences that vibrate the theater walls with the visual reminiscence of the death stars trench run in episode four a new hope star wars what are you five only brought to life in the seams i don't, I don't care about that okay once you understand that part of the movie you may get why conservatives are desperate to claim this is their movie I don't know if they are as much as they're just like, yeah, no, uh, we like good movies that are kind of apolitical. That'd be nice. I'd like to see you cite your sources on that claim, but whatever. Uh, to the portion of the audience, uh, Top Gun Maverick is a two-hour, 11-minute Cialis ad starting a guy with flexible hips who can still climb a ladder to clean out his own roof gutters. Again, more shaming language. Maverick represents that aging audience's ideal self. He blasts down the road in his all-American Kawasaki motorcycle. Ugh, we got it. Refusing to wear a helmet to play by the rule. Oh, to play by, yeah, the rules. Okay, his motto is, don't think, just do. His three and a half decades long friendship with Iceman, now known as a four-star admiral, oh, Tom Iceman Kaczynski. Isn't that Val Kilmer? Yeah, he can't really do much anymore. And if you're unfamiliar with his uh, health situation, ensures he'll never suffer any consequences for, say, disobeying orders. Yeah, exactly. What, you're big mad that, um... This isn't a story about a guy following the rules. It would have been quite the blockbuster if that was, oh, a man who just files his paperwork and he clocks in at nine, at five to nine every morning and he leaves at a couple minutes after five and he goes home and he just gets berated by his slightly overweight wife while his two loser kids do, do nothing but post TikToks. Yeah, it would have been a really fucking insightful film if that would have been the case. But no, evoking some sort of a, an American rebellious spirit. Remember, that used to be popular it still is with a vast majority of people out there. And finally, finally, you know why this is popular? Because it's being reflected out there, okay? That desire to break the rules, okay? Break, not all the rules. It's not like he's going around fucking blowing up a neighborhood or something like that. He's breaking those nonsensical, arbitrary rules that are out there, like speeding and wearing stupid helmets. Fuck that. That's why people are relating to the message. But you don't get that, okay? No, again, uh, disobeying orders and destroying a prototype air pro aircraft, that's probably worth the equivalent to GDP of a small nation. Yeah, we'll stop being poor. Uh, he teaches the next generation of the world's best fighter pilots to fly a mission that he ends up leading anyway. Yeah, exactly. Okay, like I said, I don't know anything about the film, but I'd imagine you probably need an experienced lead for a certain mission. Even if you are just training the people that are supposed to be around you, you're training your squad. But at, still, at the end of the day, you need a leader of a squad, but I wouldn't expect anybody writing for salon.com to understand you know the purpose and the necessity of hierarchies out there that's all misogyny because the world needs maverick he's that exceptional boo exceptionalism boo alpha males that's terrible that's wrong fuck off is this evidence of intentional anti-wokeness? Not so fast. Consider that the sequel also introduces the local bar as a gathering place for men and women in uniform that's run by Maverick's love interest Penny Benjamin Jennifer Connolly. God bless. 
God fucking bless the Admiral's daughter. Maverick got in trouble with way back when. Well, if it was like 30 years ago, I don't fucking blame him. Because 1991 Jennifer Connelly, that was the hottest... Actually, no, hot's not the appropriate term. The most beautiful woman to have ever existed. And still, you know, she's kind of, you know, holding on right there. Obviously, she's in fucking tremendous shape, but she is like, what? 50 something so but yeah no continue to fucking cope and seethe but the fact that um yeah an apolitical film can succeed and if it was only salon.com wouldn't be paying this much attention i wouldn't be giving it a second thought but oh no no you got the guardian out here and uh, leave it to the fucking bastion of intellect across the pond that is the intellect after or the is the guardian after all okay care of Jesse Hasinger, who I'm sure is just, uh, yes, uh, the peak of credibility. No, Top Gun Maverick success isn't down to being pro-America and anti-woke. Right-wing pundits have tried to claim the sequel's box office success as their success, but there are enough examples to show that that isn't the case. Someone's big mad. Top Gun Maverick is posed to continue its epic box office run this weekend. Yeah, continue to see, uh, with no major competition at U.S. multiplexes, and doesn't really look like there's going to be much on the horizon. So continue on, on fucking flying towards that horizon, my guy. It'll soon zoom past 250 million mark in domestic grosses alone. Exactly the only place that matters, USA. U.S. Anyways, uh, with 400 million or more still well within its sights, it could uh, wind up being the highest grossing movie of the year, at least until Avatar 2 drops. Ugh, God. Does anybody even remember the original Avatar? It's the highest grossing film of all time. But I watched it once, fell asleep a couple of times, and it was still on when I woke up both times. That fucking movie sucks a trillion dicks. And it came out in 2009? took that long to make a sequel well here we are talking about a sequel to a movie that came out in the fucking 80s but still is anybody really chomping at the bit for avatar 2 i don't really know anyways uh if you read the analysis of certain right-leaning pundits uh top gun mavericks triumph is it oh is their triumph and a rebuke of woke culture no i would say that's pretty obvious uh from the substance of the film at least what's being relayed out there okay like i said no first-hand knowledge of this this is just what i've heard and again what's also making these people fucking big fucking mad about this because it isn't trying to push a narrative it isn't trying to push a message all it is is just a bunch of uh, middle-aged men who are still hanging on flying actual planes and being spectacular like that but no like i said it's the continued success week over week because if it was just nostalgia bait it would have fell off by now but it hasn't uh but yes no a rebuke of woke woke culture by which is meant movies and television shows that do not exclusively feature white men in their leading roles no no that's what you'd like to think and that's your redefinition of words but no i'll just let you go on that one because you can go ahead and you, it's not like you're gonna you know, change your opinion on that anyways it is indeed true that top gun maverick does not go out of its way to celebrate inclusion and diversity in sometimes cloying corporate ways most closely associated with uh, associated with various disney properties as if there is no first gay character in top gun that we know of that's okay disney will continue assigning similar designations to minor and or desexualized characters for years to come somebody fuck that touch a nerve or something like that fucking christ okay this is what yeah paramount property uh disney is a totally different production house and if you're just you know what um, if you're fine with their disastrous films that make a lot of money to begin with and then just fucking drop right off a cliff you go for that they continue to push the politics that you like but uh over here we'll we'll just take the fighter pilot movie that's fine outlets like daily wire breitbart and he and their lockstep followers at Fox News. Okay, you've got yeah, Daily Wire, which is just, you know, basic bitch Tradcon takes. Breitbart, which is kind of hit and miss right-wing takes. Okay, and then Fox News, just old boomer neocons. Like, okay. And what, you're going to try to relegate um, a Fox News to being in the same camp as Daily Wire and Breitbart? If you take a look at traffic numbers, that's kind of a shot against Daily Wire and Breitbart because they do far better than Fox News. But then if you're also looking at traditional means, that's kind of um, doing a disservice to the popularity of the most popular cable news channel that's out there, but whatever. Fox is, you know, what kind of a, a multi-headed media campaign, but whatever you do, you. But they have, okay, this is what they're using as, uh, oh yeah, it's being co-opted by conservatives, okay, have described the release of Top Gun Maverick as both a rare occurrence and a rare win for Hollywood is both absurd and telling. Of course, people like Tommy Laren, ew, 
Why would you quote a feminist? Need to emphasize the traditional, uh, read white and male skewing nature of Top Gun Maverick. Let, let's just go ahead and we'll just fact check this because we still got this up here. We got the, what, 382 reviews. Tara McNamara, okay, of Common Sense Media, okay. Uh, compared to the original, the sequel is 70% less sweaty, 85% less sexy, and 90% more tween appropriate. Top Gun Maverick is a tale of redemption for both Maverick and the original film. You got, uh, I could imagine just a, a woman. I, I don't know what Common Sense Media is, but uh, it's not exactly a glowing review, but then at the same time, it's not a condemnation it has nothing to do with the message that's out there how about tony baker right you got his picture right there obviously a straight white man uh it was corny it was cheesy it was emotional it was exciting all right cool again uh, just pandering pandering to uh the the certain base right mm -hmm, of course dwight brown all the visuals glisten as well composed perfectly lit and many are, br are bigger than life due to cinematographer claudio miranda's uh, life of pi but for close-ups oh yes there you go once again you know a proper characterization of the base right a three and a half point five out of four right or what about ranuka vijava uh, the times of india it has just the right amount of nostalgia, drama, and nail-biting action to make it worthy of a theatrical viewing. Four out of five stars. The Times of India. Obviously pandering to uh, American audiences, right? And that's the only reason why it was successful. But no, it's not. It's because... Well, actually, you can't really put your finger on it. Oh, maybe because it's just a, a good film that isn't trying to push a message. And people over the past, what, better part of a decade have been forced to endure that if they are to engage in any sort of entertainment. Yeah, no, exactly. I, I don't think this is going to end up shifting the tide when it's all said and done. But if we're taking a look at movies that are in production right now, seeing the success of Top Gun Maverick, realizing that maybe we could just go back to like storytelling and character based, you know, interactions and make a good film out of that maybe we don't need to pander to anybody that would be cool maybe we can be like overwhelming overwhelmingly successful so is it going to be changing in the short term nah because marvel films are still going to make marvel film money but you still continue to see that fucking sharp drop off at the end you're going to see more people start to go along the same along the same lines is the top gun maverick as opposed to what's coming out next. Marvel film number 37 or 38, whatever the fuck it's on right now. Who gives a shit? But before we completely take off, I just found this one out as well. Top Gun Maverick should be grounded. Copyright suit claims Paramount straps in to defend ourselves vigorously. Yeah, no, uh, now it's getting sued because apparently the source material uh, is alleged to have been ripped off according to some, I don't know, obscure writer that's out here. Okay, specifically, there's now a legal dogfight between the film's uh, box office high flyer Paramount Pictures and Israeli-based Oy Vey, Wind, or Widow and Son, the author of the 1983 article that inspired the original 1986 movie. Why didn't, why didn't you sue the first time around? Oh, it's because this one's going to make like $400 million. All right, in a copyright fight, in a copyright suit filed Monday. California's federal court, Shohas Yodve. Oh my lord. Did this filing come with a uh, bowl of matzo ball soup and the Yuval Yanye? A want unspecified but clearly big buck damages from the studio and with a very odd sense of timing. Yeah, very odd. Okay, an injunction to stop screenings and the distribution of the May 27 released sequel as well as many more movies in the franchise. Uh, of course, calling Top Gun Maverick derivative, the Mark Toberoff and Alex Kaczynski represented Yondye's allege. The Paramount is thumbing its nose at the statute that allows the termination of rights after 35 years. I don't fucking need that. Somebody's just obviously trying to wet their beaks, okay? Or their curly cues. They're mad because it's successful, and it's successful in spite of them being mad, okay? Not not the authors or anything like that. This is a bigger talk, okay? But even more important than that is why they're mad is, of course, because it's successful, and that makes them mad. With all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.